choking first aid. It's important because 5,000 people a year die in this country from choking. About 20,000 end up in the emergency room. American Heart Association says 98% of those are preventable if somebody just did the right thing. So that's why we want to do it. Um, so the first thing is how to identify somebody who's choking. Well, when people are choking, typically they'll reach for their throat. That's the international sign of choking. So if somebody's doing that, the first thing you do is ask if they can speak. If they can speak, they're moving air. If they're moving air, they're still moving oxygen, right? So if they're doing that, you want to encourage them to cough, try and get it out. And as long as they can cough, there's hope that they can get it out. So you stay with them. The one thing you never do is leave someone alone when they're, when they're choking. And uh, if you can call 911, you'll call, call 911. But you keep encouraging them to cough. What we're going to teach is uh, what, what the Red Cross teaches, which is a two-part thing. It's a back slap followed by the, what used to be called the Heimlich maneuver, now called the abdominal thrust maneuver. So they, their protocol, they call the five and five. So you do five back slaps, five abdominal thrusts, and you just keep going back and forth until the obstruction's out. And sometimes you have to do it 10, 20 times. Um, sometimes it comes out the first time, but if it doesn't, you just keep going back and forth, five and five, five and five. So we're going to start by um, just learning how to do the abdominal thrust maneuver. So when you're going to do it on someone, the important thing is you want to be between their belly button and their rib cage. If you're below the belly button, you're going to be pressing on their bladder. The wrong thing's coming out. If you're above the rib cage, you can break ribs, you can lacerate the spleen, liver, stomach. So the best way to teach it is you reach around, find somebody's belly button. So reach around, find the belly button. Then you're going to roll your fist up sideways right above it. So you're going to be just like that. Okay. So the belly button, you roll your fist up. The other one can covers that one. And then why don't you lean forward a little bit because typically when somebody's choking, they're leaning forward. And then you give what they call a, a J stroke, which is basically just kind of up and in. And it's a quick little thing. You want to just do a quick little move. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So now, now we're going to go to the more difficult one. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Okay. This is the advanced one. These are a little harder because. Typically, you're going to have to work at it. Not, not too many people are successful in the first time. So this one's a little harder to get out, but same thing. Find the belly button, roll your fist up above, cover it, lean forward a little, and then a quick move. Oh. <laughs> are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> that was intentional. I know that. I'm going to do the back slap. When um, somebody's choking, they can go unconscious very quickly, so you want to support them in case they black out while you're doing it and hit the ground. So they're typically leaning forward. You put an arm across here to catch them, and if they start to go down, you can help lower them to the ground. So you got someone like this, and then right between the shoulder blades, you're going to do with the heel of your hand five little slaps. So we go one. Now, if you've done five and it hasn't come out, then you're going to reach around and you're going to do the abdominal thrust maneuver. So, when you're doing the back slaps, the type of force you use is similar to a bottle of ketchup. If you ever had a bottle of ketchup and you're trying to get it out, that's the move you want to make. The, the same thing here. If you're going to do the abdominal thrust maneuver, they can black out and fall forward. So, you want to brace them. So, you step one leg forward and reach around. That way, if they start falling forward, you can help lower them to the ground. So you reach around, find, find the uh, belly button, roll your fist up above, and give a quick little pop. So there's going to be some people that you can't reach around, okay? And if you can't reach around someone, you do a sternal thrust. So it's the same maneuver as abdominal thrust, you just find the sternum and do it. So if he was sitting at a table and you couldn't reach around, you just come right over the top, find a sternum and do the same thing. Same thing if, they're, if someone's pregnant, stand up. If, it, if Skip was pregnant, I feel like it's, yeah, it's the same thing. You don't want to do an abdominal thrust on somebody who's pregnant. So what you're going to do is you can reach under their arms, you can reach over the top, however you need to do it to get on the stern. I'm going to do the same thing with the pregnant person. Okay, then the last thing is if somebody goes unconscious, they hit the ground, then what do you do? You do, basically you start CPR because when you're doing CPR, two things are going to happen. Um, one, they're not breathing anymore, but you're circulating their blood, which has oxygen still in it. 
So it, that keeps them alive for a while. That's like the hands-only CPR that's taught now by American Heart. The other thing, by pressing on their sternum due to the CPR, you're generating a high oh, airway right. pressure, which can expel that thing. Checking in. Well, I think you got it, okay? Do they have a method for it? If you're by yourself and you're trained to your own abdominal thrusts? So basically, it's the same thing. That spot between your belly button and your ribs, you want to hit on the edge of a tabletop chair, whatnot. So here, I would come down and I would just drop into it like that. So.